Never in the history of science fiction has a man endured the burden that Isaac Clarke carried through his life. Seeking to rescue his loved one, he finds himself stranded in events that would drive anyone into madness. Teetering on the brink of madness and death, he never fall for the future of mankind lies upon of shoulders. Isaac Clarke was a former ship systems engineer who worked for the Concordance Extraction Corporation and the protagonist of the Dead Space series. During the second Aegis 7 incident, he was part of an emergency maintenance team of the USG Kellyan that was sent to the USG Ishimura to investigate and handle the ship's mysterious communications failure. Apparently the sole survivor of the incident, Isaac became stranded in space for a long period of time before he was rescued by an Earth government ship. For the next three years, Isaac was held in an asylum on Titan Station and was diagnosed with a form of dementia resulting in haunting illusions that taunted him throughout the incident. His mind was harvested for blueprints which EarthGov used to create marker copies. Years later, he still had the codes to create or destroy the markers. He experienced the effects of dementia once again when he was exposed to one of the Brethren Moons. Born on June 5th, 2461, Isaac lived with his parents, Poole Clark who was a ship designer and Octavia Clark who was a unitologist in the northeastern American seaboard sector. As a child, Isaac lived most of his life with his mother as his father went on an extended mission before he could even get to know him. Isaac took after his father and obtained an education in electrical and mechanical engineering. He was selected to attend a prominent engineering academy. Unfortunately, he was unable to afford the tuition fees as his mother had squandered the family funds to purchase a vested level title in the Church of Unitology. This led to his distrust and hatred for unitologists and unitology in general. Despite his financial difficulties, Isaac managed to graduate with high honors from a lesser college by becoming a ship systems engineer. Several years later, he signed up for the Merchant Marines Division, allowing him to prove his abilities in original engineering situations to his superiors. Impressed by his progress, Isaac's superiors promoted Isaac to a position closer to the major shipping lanes. At an unspecified time, Isaac worked on the Ishimura. Isaac lived with Nicole Brennan, but his career had begun to stagnate a couple of years before her assignment to the Ishimura. Even before the events of Dead Space, Isaac Clark had strong resentment for the Unitologists, which was an emotion that originated from the actions of his mother who spent all of the family funds on the religion. Following the events of Dead Space, this feeling would grow from distrust into hatred. Isaac enrolled in the Electrical and Mechanical Engineering course, joined the Merchant Marines and focused on major shipping lanes. Isaac tried to find out where his father was but he was missing for quite some time and his personal files were kept classified by EarthGov. Isaac loved Nicole deeply as it was shown by his determination to find her among the infested USG Ishimura. Isaac was also heavily distraught after finding out that Nicole had committed suicide during the initial necromorph infestation and his visions up to that point had merely been hallucinations caused by the marker. Even three years later during the events on the sprawl, Isaac found himself unable to let go of Nicole and was saddened and weakened by her continuous psychological presence. Fortunately, as Isaac traveled deeper into the sprawl, he displayed strength against Nicole and was increasingly more willing to let go of her. Even so, Isaac was consumed with guilt over the death of Nicole as he had encouraged her to take a post up on the USG Ishimura. Due to his experiences on the USG Ishimura and the betrayal of Kendra, Isaac was understandably reluctant to trust fellow survivors, particularly anyone associated with EarthGov or the Church of Unitology. However, he would still go out of his way to help others if the situation allowed for it. Isaac's distrust of EarthGov began with Kendra's betrayal and their interests in producing the red markers for energy purposes. He was constantly hunted by EarthGov forces while on Titan Station who had been ordered to eliminate him along with the other subjects who were part of the Marker Project. Even after escaping from Titan Station, he was still hunted and was forced to go underground to avoid being captured. 
After being apprehended by Robert Norton and John Carver on the New Horizons lunar colony, Clark refused to help them partly because they were EarthGov soldiers. He was a selfless and determined individual as it was shown throughout the series. Some examples are him activating a gunship so Ellie could be rescued despite her protests, and trying to save a fellow engineer Santos from a cable car under attack by a large necromorph when doing so was dangerous to his own life, and when Carver cut the cable from the car and sent the engineer to her death, Isaac was angry and distraught. He also protected Carver from the necromorphs during Carver's hallucination confrontations in the marker containment labs. As a CEC engineer, Isaac is extremely resourceful. He displays his best abilities in hacking, repairing and dismantling electronic devices and has extensive knowledge of high-tech mining tools and other weapons which he uses to his advantage when in dangerous situations. An example of this came about during the sprawl outbreak where he dismantled a kinesis therapy machine box in the hospital and removed its kinesis module for his own uses along with a stasis module some time later. He was also able to improvise a makeshift plasma cutter by using a flashlight and a surgical module when he tried to help a survivor. Isaac's occupation and duty of being an engineer for nearly 20 years also took a toll on his posture. Throughout the series, he walks and stands with a very noticeable hunch. Isaac had no prior combat training aside from the GUMMC, before the events of Dead Space, being forced to defend himself against the necromorphs with whatever he could use as a weapon. Isaac learned the best ways of dealing with the necromorphs through logs that were left behind by fallen survivors, even keeping one after his ordeal on Titan Station. Isaac appeared to be more compatible with the marker signal and it did not drive him to murderous or suicidal insanity like most people. Instead, the marker's dementia manifested in the form of hallucinations, often of Nicole Brennan, which pushed Isaac into completing more complex tasks to further the marker's agenda. Due to his compatibility, Marker 3A was able to imprint codes and blueprints for the creation of red markers in his brain as well. These blueprints were used by Hans Tiedemann to construct the Site-12 marker on Titan Station, with Tiedemann stating that Isaac's mind was the purest among all the patients at the project. In 2508, Isaac volunteered to be part of an emergency response unit that was attached to the USG Kellyan. The crew was dispatched to the USG Ishimura. The ship had last been reported orbiting Aegis 7 on its illegal mission to crack the planet. Their mission was to investigate the distress signal that had been sent by the Ishimura and discover the reason behind the total communications blackout. Upon their arrival, the Kellyan tried to hail the Ishimura to establish communications with the ship's crew, but was greeted with static messages. Unfortunately, as the Kellyan tried to land on the Ishimura, the shuttle was severely damaged by a docking procedure malfunction and was forced to crash land into the landing bay. Due to the emergency crash landing, the Kellyan lost its port booster. Shortly after disembarking from the damaged Kellyan and noticing that the ship seemed to be deserted, the party was attacked by several unidentified entities in the flight lounge. These entities were revealed to be the Ishimura's deceased crew members that were being reanimated by a recombinant extraterrestrial infection known as necromorphs. In the aftermath of the attack, only Isaac Clark, Computer Specialist Kendra Daniels and Chief Security Officer Zach Hammond survived. Isaac was separated from the emergency response unit and avoided his pursuers by escaping in a nearby elevator. Still in touch with Kendra and Hammond via RIG, Isaac aided in the Ishimura's repair by fulfilling numerous tasks across the ship. Despite the necromorph opposition, an SOS beacon was eventually placed on an asteroid that was undergoing or extraction and purged from the mining hole. The signal attracted the attention of a military vessel called the USM Valor. However, the crew of the Valor was slaughtered shortly after they recovered an Ishimura escape pod that was containing a slasher, trapped and unintentionally jettisoned from the ship's bridge by Hammond. With most of its crew dead or being transformed into necromorphs, the Valor was left to drift out of control and subsequently sideswiped the Ishimura, violently crashing into it. 
A successful attempt to retrieve the Valor's Singularity Core resulted in Hammond's death at the hands of an enhanced brute. Returning to the Ishimura, Isaac was contacted by Dr. Terence Kine, a scientist who planned to return Marker 3A to the colony below via the remaining shuttle. After Isaac repaired the shuttle with the Valor's Singularity Core and restored its navigation disks, Kine was shot and killed by Kendra. She revealed herself to be a covert Earth government agent, and the entire conflict on Aegis 7 was due to the CEC interference with the marker. Shortly thereafter, she departed with the marker. Left for dead on the Ishimura, Isaac was saved by Nicole, or so it seemed. After appearing, she compelled him to take the marker back to Aegis 7, recalling the shuttle in the process. She forced Kendra to abandon the shuttle in an escape pod. Once he was on the devastated planet, Isaac finally succeeded in returning the marker to its pedestal. This resulted in a massive EMP that disabled the gravity tethers that were holding the chunk of Aegis 7 above orbit, causing it to fall back onto the planet. Kendra appeared and removed the marker from the pedestal with the intention to load it into the shuttle and return to Earth. Before leaving Isaac to his fate, Kendra insisted that he had gone insane. She forced him to watch the conclusion of Nicole's video to Isaac, and he learned that she had committed suicide during the outbreak on the ship. The marker had been using Nicole's voice and appearance in his hallucinations. Despondent, Isaac returned to the shuttle pad in time to see the hive mind brutally kill Kendra. It attacked Isaac, but he defeated it. After the engagement, Isaac piloted the executive shuttle just in time to escape from the colony as the tectonic load crashed down onto the planet. After his narrow escape, he reviewed Nicole's video one more time before being attacked by a hallucination of Nicole and presumably going insane. Shortly after the second Aegis 7 incident, Isaac's shuttle was picked up by Recovery Patrol X22376, commanded by Captain Maximilian Reinhardt and Xander Sklar. After his rescue, Isaac was placed in a stasis chamber and taken to Titan Station. There, Isaac, a scientist named Nolan Strauss and several others spent the next three years subjected to experimentation by Earth government in Project Telomere. Isaac was confined to the psych ward in the Titan Memorial Medical Center and was diagnosed with dementia and post-traumatic stress disorder. Using the information that was imprinted in his mind by Marker 3A, memory suppressants were used in order to keep him and the other subjects in check as they manufactured the blueprint that allowed EarthGov to build the Site-12 marker. When a necromorph infestation suddenly ravaged the sprawl, Isaac woke up in a hospital and was freed by Franco DeLille who was transformed into a necromorph immediately after. After escaping from the overrun hospital, he was forced to make his way to a woman named Dana, Franco's superior. As a result of stasis and the memory suppressants, Isaac was unable to remember the past three years or how he ended up on the sprawl. Dana claimed that she could cure Isaac's dementia which was allegedly killing him. Left with no choice, Isaac made his way to Dana by surviving encounters with the necromorphs and EarthGov troops that had been ordered to kill him by Titan Station's director Hans Tiedemann. As Isaac made his way closer to the marker, he experienced more disturbing hallucinations from his dementia which were more apparitions of Nicole. Eventually, Isaac made his way through the Sprawl's Church of Unitology to Dana's location only to find out that she was a devout Unitologist fanatic that had been sent to capture him. It became clear that as well as being forced to survive the Necromorph onslaught, Isaac was also caught in the middle of a growing conflict between EarthGov and the Church of Unitology. EarthGov wanted him dead as they did not want him to destroy their marker, and the church sought to possess Isaac because the red marker on Aegis 7 had left the knowledge of how to build markers in Isaac's mind. The government was after that technology to study its effects and possibly develop it into a weapon while the Unitologists wished to build their own markers in the interests of their faith. Isaac was saved from capture by a government gunship which killed all of the Unitologists that were present and forced Isaac into a maintenance hallway. There, Isaac was attacked by a massive necromorph and as he escaped, he managed to destroy both his pursuers. Helpless with no contacts or a feasible escape plan, 
Isaac was contacted by a fellow test subject named Nolan Strauss. Isaac had encountered Strauss several times before during which Strauss had revealed that he had also encountered Marker 3A and had been used to build new ones alongside Isaac. Strauss informed Isaac that there was a way to destroy the new marker and guided him to its location. Along the way, Isaac encountered another survivor named Ellie Langford who rejected his offer of help and absconded. Some time later, Isaac was contacted by Ellie who had found Strauss on her way toward the government sector. Agreeing to work together and keep Strauss alive, Isaac made his way to them. Despite several attempts by Director Tiedemann to thwart Isaac's efforts, including forcibly separating a portion of the sprawl, Isaac, Ellie and Strauss were still able to progress. During these events, Isaac discovered the recovered USG Ishimura which was almost fully repaired and was forced on board to use the gravity tethers to prevent the government sector from drifting away from the sprawl. As Isaac traveled in the ship's halls, his hallucinations became more aggressive and frequent. Eventually, Strauss' already weak mental state collapsed and he attacked Ellie by removing one of her eyes. The insane Strauss later attacked Isaac, who was forced to kill him. Making his way to Ellie through a mining area, the Nicole apparition attacked Isaac and demanded to know why he held on to her memory. Isaac revealed that he was obsessed and riddled with guilt because he had convinced Nicole to board the Ishimura in the first place, resulting in her death. He could not let her go because she was the only thing in the world that still mattered to him. The Nicole apparition was seemingly satisfied with this answer and revealed that acceptance was the final step in Isaac's recovery. Isaac met up with Ellie, who had found a malfunctioning mobile mining drill inside a cavern. Isaac repaired it, and Ellie piloted the mining drill while Isaac defended her from a horde of necromorphs. The two drilled their way through an organic mass to the government sector where Ellie found a working gunship. After a moment of contemplation, Isaac activated the gunship from outside, instructing Ellie to leave him and escape. Assuring the heartbroken Ellie that she would be safe, Isaac kept going to the marker's location. As Nicole's illusion guided Isaac to the marker, he remained uncertain about his subsequent actions. He was also forced to evade Tiedemann's personal troops by thwarting them by cutting the power to the sector and letting a horde of necromorphs loose on the security force. Continuing his way to the marker, Isaac came to a machine which had been the subject of Strauss' mental state. The machine activated the parts of Isaac's brain where the marker codes along with his lost memories were stored. At this period, the necromorphs had already reached the marker in numbers and were sufficient to initiate a convergence event. Hunted by the near-immortal Ubermorph, Isaac was able to make his way to the marker where an angry and badly burned Tiedemann awaited him. After Isaac disarmed and killed Tiedemann, Nicole's apparition embraced him in front of the marker and told him that he had to die as the marker had to inherit its creators to be complete as part of the convergence event. Isaac then entered a state of limbo. He mentally managed to break free of the marker's influence while in reality, he was destroying the marker. As soon as Isaac regained his sanity, he resigned himself to his death as the marker and the station fell apart but this was not to pass. Ellie was able to collect him with the gunship that Isaac had sent her away in by bursting through the roof of the marker chamber. As she navigated through the collapsing station, Isaac engaged the thrusters on his suit and boosted to the gunship moments before the whole sector collapsed. Isaac, haunted by his past, expected all of this to be another cruel hallucination. Thankfully, all that sat beside him was a grateful Ellie. After escaping from Titan Station, Isaac and Ellie went into hiding. They became romantically involved and took up residence in the Earthrise apartments on Luna's New Horizons colony. Despite the fact that he had freed himself from the marker's mental grip, Isaac was still suffering from its effects. His mind contained the secrets to create and destroy them. Isaac's inability to move on from the past eventually caused their relationship to deteriorate. Ellie ended their relationship and left Isaac. On his own, Isaac continued to run from his past and was unaware about the escalation of events between EarthGov and the Unitologists. 
he was still distraught over losing Ellie. One day without warning, his apartment was infiltrated and he was attacked by Sergeant John Carver and Captain Robert Norton of the Earth Defense Force. Norton explained briefly that they needed him to destroy the markers. Isaac initially refused. However, when he was told that Ellie had gone near Tal Volantis and was currently missing, he agreed to help Norton and Carver. The New Horizons Lunar Colony was attacked by the Circle, a militant unitologist sect that was under the leadership of Jacob Danik. Along the way, Isaac discovered that Danik was working to destroy EarthGov. Separated from Norton, Isaac was briefly captured by Danik who explained his intentions with the sabotage and murder of the civilians in the colony. He forced Isaac to watch the destruction of the colony's marker test lab. After escaping from Danik and making his way through the newly infected city, Isaac escaped aboard the USM Eudora with Norton and Carver. Upon arrival at Tau Volantis, the USM Eudora was bombarded by remote mines in the Sovereign Colony's fleet debris above the planet. Isaac quickly devised a plan to secure the pilots named Mark Rosen and Locke in Eudora's escape module. He donned an EVA suit and space walked to the module, releasing it from the outside before the destruction of the Eudora sent it flying headlong into the debris field with he and Carver in close pursuit and Norton hanging on to the module and trying to regain control. The crew managed to survive the hectic ordeal and board one of the abandoned ships called the CMS Roanoke. Isaac reunited with the crew of the Eudora and Ellie who he discovered was now romantically involved with Norton. A technician named Jennifer Santos and a marker operative named Austin Buckle found a shuttle in poor condition aboard the CMS Terra Nova called the CMS Crozier. Ellie reported that Admiral Marjorie Graves of Roanoke had written marker inscriptions on the wall of her room that may provide further leads. After investigating, Isaac deciphered the writing and revealed that the Admiral had discovered a machine that was controlling the markers and was obsessed with the phrase, turn it off. Ellie concluded that Tau Volantis was the marker homeworld. Norton spoke out urgently in favor of escaping to safety, but Isaac, Ellie and the marker ops team opted to continue the mission. They found a spare shuttle aboard the Terra Nova that was capable of descending to the planet's surface. Norton claimed that Isaac was siding with Ellie because he still had feelings for her. He implored Isaac to abandon the mission for the sake of Ellie's safety by pointing out that there was little hope of success and a significant chance that they would all be killed, but Isaac contended that everyone would die if they gave up. Norton continued voicing his doubts about the mission. After the shuttle was secured, the team boarded and proceeded to enter the atmosphere of Tau Volantis. During the landing sequence, the shuttle was knocked off course and crashed, killing Locke and Rosen and separating Isaac from the rest of the group. Isaac woke up on the frozen planet suffering from severe hypothermia, but warmed himself from the piles of the burning debris. Desperately searching through the wreckage of the shuttle, Isaac was greatly relieved to find a video that had been recorded by Ellie and the other survivors. Isaac proceeded to follow their trail of flares into a building where he found Buckle lying on the floor. After a brief talk, Buckle succumbed to his injuries. After some searching, Isaac found a RIG that was designed to withstand the freezing temperatures, and eventually caught up to Ellie and the team. In the meantime, Santos successfully recovered fragments of the written information on an experiment that would help them. While attempting to reach the warehouse, they were attacked by Danik and his soldiers. Isaac was separated from the team, but managed to escape from the unitologists and regroup in the warehouse. In the warehouse was a giant frozen necromorph hive mind known as the Nexus, which contained signals within its body that could be traced back to the machine. While attempting to thaw it and triangulate the signal, Isaac, Norton and Carver were ambushed and captured by Danik's soldiers. Danik revealed that it was Norton who had led them to the planet under the pretense that he and the others would be given a shuttle if Isaac surrendered to him. However, Danik reneged on their deal, intending to execute all of them. Isaac attacked Danik. He, 
Carver and Norton were able to fend the circle off long enough to regain a mild advantage. However, the emergence of the Nexus altered their situation. Isaac was sucked into the belly of the beast and forced to shoot his way out. In the ensuing confusion, Norton became hostile and began blaming Isaac for all of their misfortunes. Norton fired at Isaac and Carver at which point Isaac fired back in self-defense, shooting Norton in the head. After regrouping, Isaac tried to explain to Ellie what had happened, but she refused to listen to him. Santos uncovered information about a device that the researchers referred to as the Codex and a guide known as Rosetta in a lab on top of a nearby mountain. The group ascended the mountain, but a creature called the Snow Beast attacked when Santos was in the cargo cage. Carver severed the main cable, disconnecting it and sacrificing Santos to prevent the entire cliff side from collapsing. Isaac eventually killed the snow beast by pulling it apart with engine-powered harpoons and reunited with Ellie and Carver at the lab. As they explored the lab, they discovered that Rosetta was an alien dissected and carved up into separate sections. Rosetta possessed information about the Codex, the Markers and the Convergence event. When all of the pieces of Rosetta were combined and scanned, Isaac was able to use the lab's equipment to experience Rosetta's memories. Rosetta was one of the planet's inhabitants that had uncovered a black marker. This eventually led to a cataclysmic necromorph infestation. After securing control over the sufficient biomass, the convergence event began. The event involved a massive transfer of organic matter, necromorph mass and other materials into orbit along with the marker to create a brother moon which was the same moon that was orbiting Tau Volantis. Despite the imminent extinction of their species, the aliens had used the last of their resources to construct an unimaginably powerful city-sized machine which managed to quickly freeze the largely ocean world of Tau Volantis, halting the convergence event. Isaac unknowingly revealed much of this in front of Danik, who stole the Codex. He tried to stop the unitologists by using the decontamination protocol, but Danik escaped. The room filled with corrosive lethal gas which trapped Ellie and separated her from Isaac. Seeing no way out, Ellie tearfully told Isaac to close the doors so he and Carver could escape. Enraged by the loss of Ellie, Isaac and Carver relentlessly pursued Danik by decimating the remaining Unitologist soldiers along the way. They recovered the Codex from Danik and descended to the buried alien city where they discovered how to use the machine. At the machine's core, Danik waited with Ellie who had found a way to escape from the gas, but had been captured by the Unitologist reinforcements. Danik threatened to kill Ellie unless Isaac gave him the Codex. Carver, believing in redemption, grabbed the Codex from Isaac and threw it to Danik who let go of Ellie to catch it. Danik immediately used it to turn the machine off, resuming the convergence event. The incomplete brother moon that was free from the machine's control descended toward Tau Volantis by instantly stripping the surface layers of the planet away under which the city and the machine were buried. The ancient alien necropolis began to disintegrate as it ascended to be consumed. Enraptured by his success, Danik was unceremoniously impaled and killed by a piece of falling debris. Realizing that there was no way to stop such an overwhelming force and escape safely, Isaac kissed Ellie goodbye and she escaped on a shuttle. Isaac and Carver worked together to fight their way through the crumbling flying city to the Codex. Being pulled up into the moon-sized organism, they managed to reactivate the machine and set it to its original function which stopped the event and caused the moon to crash into Tau Volantis along with the remains of the alien city. Ellie grieved for Isaac, but took solace in realizing that her ship's instruments no longer detected the marker signal. The necromorph moon was falling apart as it descended into and merged with the planet in a horrific cataclysm. Ellie set a course for Earth and left the orbit of Tau Volantis. Later, Isaac's voice was heard calling out for Ellie which was followed by the sound of Isaac's breathing apparatus. Isaac and Carver woke up underground after reactivating the machine and destroying the Brother Moon. After claiming a Unitologist ship, 
They escaped from the planet only to find out that they could not go back home without the shock point drive which happened to be on the Terra Nova, the last surviving ship in the SCF flotilla. The two defeated the newly formed Unitologist cult and their so-called prophet, and piloted the Terra Nova back to Earth only to discover that the other brethren moons had already arrived. One of the moons arose, causing both Isaac and Carver to suffer further damage from dementia and the screen cut to black. Their status is currently unknown. Ben Wannett, the former creative director of Dead Space, has revealed in an interview that he considered Isaac and Carver as options to be the protagonist of the cancelled Dead Space 4 game, suggesting that both of them survived the Terra Nova crashing into one of the Brethren moons.